Well, Joseph Haynes Davis is a lawyer, broadcaster, and social policy professional. He joins us from Orlando, Florida. Mr. Davis, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us here on TRT World. This is pretty untimely, uh, the president's illness so close to the election. Um, tell us what happens if the president is unable to take part in the race and under what conditions could uh, Mike Prince, Pence rather, assume the presidency? Okay, well, as always, thank you for having me. In terms of the president not taking part in the race, uh, I'm not so sure. I mean, uh, theoretically, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, Zoom and some of, uh, you know, for instance, what I'm doing here on Skype, it could be some type of uh, uh, Skype or Zoom type of broadcasts if there are future debates, I assume. I'm not sure. But in terms of the succession, uh, should the president uh, be incapacitated, that falls up under the 25th Amendment, uh, which speaks to the presidential disability and uh, succession. Uh, that was passed by Congress back in July of 1965. It was ratified in February of 1967. Uh, the uh, thing that is probably applicable now would be if the president is incapacitated for some time, uh, then the vice president would uh, stand in his shoes and take over and run the country. Uh, that also can uh, be uh, achieved uh, by a majority uh, of the principal officers of the executive departments and other such bodies uh, can, as, as they provide by law, uh, uh, the uh, saying that the president cannot discharge his powers, then the vice president can uh, take over. The president can also uh, challenge uh, some of uh, those uh, procedures if the president does, in fact, feel that he can discharge his powers even though he might be incapacitated for some time. So uh, the issue is looking at the 25th Amendment and seeing how that applies uh, to the succession and the discharge of powers by the president or the vice president. I believe you're right on your first point. Um, I believe the Trump's campaign team has launched Operation MAGA. I believe that's what it's called, to continue the president's campaigning even while he's in the hospital. On your second point, as it pertains to the Second Amendment, how incapacitated does the president need to be for that to kick into effect? Well, it all depends because this is uncharted waters. Uh, the uh, second point of the 25th Amendment, I think, uh, what you meant. Uh, it, you know, this is uncharted waters. Uh, the last uh, instance obviously, was the assassination of uh, President uh, John F. Kennedy, and uh, that was before the 25th Amendment was enacted and passed, obviously, with the death of the president. Uh, in that instance, uh, via an assassin's bullet, uh, the vice president became the president. Um, but as to the question of how incapacitated the president needs to be, that is uncharted waters, and all we can do is wait and see how his health develops uh, to the positive or to the negative. And I would uh, like to say here, uh, no matter what your political persuasion is, you always hope for the best of anyone, anyone on the planet who happens to uh, have uh, this dreaded viral infection, this dreaded viral disease, you always hope for the best and uh, pray uh, for a positive outcome. Those words precisely exactly what many Democrats have tweeted. They're praying for the president and his family. Just out of curiosity, though, can the election be delayed? Uh, what does the law say about delaying it? I, I think I heard your question being uh, whether or not the election could be delayed. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, um, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the Constitution uh, here in the United States is the rule of law, and uh, we are a constitutional republic. Uh, so uh, the election 
uh, has to go on, as far as I understand the Constitution. And uh, uh, we will see. This is uncharted waters. Right, Mr. Davis, I appreciate you again taking time to speak with us. Thanks again for that.